know. Good evening. Michael A. Lima, Career Center, Habit Development Commission, Recreation Commission. Some of, some of the ideas that I have this evening, uh, we need to reinstitute middle school sports along with intramural sports. We need to do a complete overhaul of the recreation department. I'm not suggesting firing anyone, but we need to go after grant money and we need more programs for our youth. We used to have a summer youth basketball program and we used to have a winter tournament which drew huge stars, Patrick Ewing, Ramil Robinson, local stars like Peter Tro and Tommy Barrow. We need to open up the field and the track at the Mandan Middle School for public use. We lost two fields and we got nothing back as citizens. The youth who don't like sports, we need to open up the schools to offer computer labs, arts, and music programs until 5 or 6 p.m. We need parents and volunteers to oversee these programs. We cannot rely just on teachers. The schools are open, the janitors are there, so heat and electric should not be an issue. We had a summer youth program at one time that put 1,200 kids to work in the months of July and August. That program was cut in 95 by New Gingrich. We need to get that money back. We are down to 60 kids now in that program. 1,200 to 60 kids, that's quite a difference. I work at the ferry parking lot, so I see a lot of the people that come and go. And I know a big question is we need to funnel those people into the city. Some of the ideas that I came up with is the restaurants and the merchants in downtown Bedford need to get together and offer some type of a coupon book to be given to the passengers when they board the ferry. Those coupon books, you know, could have buy one meal, get a second meal, half off, free appetizers, those types of things. We need to give those to the people who are boarding that boat prior to leaving the city because when they come back and I'm in that parking lot, all I hear is I'm tired and I gotta get home. Or I vape over at the vineyard and they just wanna leave and leave the city. So we need to entice them. We have the bus service, so we need to get that bus service to get those people to the downtown area. Thank you for listening to my ideas. Thank you, Michael. Before I go to the next uh, resident to speak, I just want to remind folks, hey, tomorrow, there's a ham and bean supper at Moose Hall, which is located, of course, at 119 Rockdale Avenue in New Bedford. This ham and bean supper is being brought to you by Scott Lang and his transition team. The donation is $10. All the proceeds will go directly to benefit the neediest family fund. There will be tickets at the door, or if you need any tickets at the end of tonight's showing, uh, you can ask Mr. Lobo for them. Also, uh, anyone who's involved in the entertaining tonight between 9 and 9.30 at the end of tonight's forum, can you please uh, meet with Phil, right? Yeah, Phil, Phil Paliokas, um, right now at the rear exit, okay? Because he wants to just go over a couple of things with you, okay? So anyone who's going to be performing for us between 9 and 9.30, please meet with Phil in the back. All right. Kevin, I really haven't prepared everything. No, you weren't talking about me, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, <laughs> all right, uh, I, I get you. And thank goodness, Ken, because we want him to stay. We don't, we don't want you singing for You're right. like a, a, you know, be like a fire going on. Everybody be running out the door if you start singing. Uh, <laughs> all right, Rob. And hey, Rob is, uh, you got an idea on a greener New Bedford. Hi, my name is Rob Sutter, and my great idea is called Plant Squad. Uh, we just call it Plant Squad is, I mean, not that it needs to be that, but anyways, the idea is for the plant squad would be to um, plant neglected and abandoned property in Bedford through managed volunteerism. That uh, you'd be uh, teaching young people how to plan plots and then and then plant them. Uh, you could take abandoned properties and any any place that needs to be green and green it through youth and also. Uh, uh, community volunteerism. Um, basically, in an ideal world, we would establish a center, possibly on city land, with a greenhouse, nursery, and operations center. You run this as a business so that people that go through a program of training would learn how a business runs. It could also be self sufficient because you could sell plants and, and whatnot. Um, 
we would uh, you do this. Uh, yeah, you, the, the idea is that not doesn't only is it to plan in plots and, and to landscape abandoned properties, but you could also use those abandoned properties as nurseries. And I mean, to get picture New Bedford is having nurseries all over the place. If you plant a plot to be a nursery, then it has you, you can pull it up after after a year if you need to. The other thing is there are a lot of properties in New Bedford that are abandoned and really they just grow weeds and, and trash collects on them. If you could allow, allow property owners to, to, to let those properties be used for greening, that would be a really good thing. Um, this, this idea has a lot of potential, and I won't go on any, any longer, but it has a lot of potential to involve a lot of different people, and um, it's something that actually came out of Leadership South Coast, which I'm a, I'm a member of this year, and I have a group of five people who are working on it starting after the first of the year. Okay, and now we'll go to Thomas J. 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 Pino. Job, job, job. All right, Thomas, you're going to need the microphone. Mr. Pina, not to interrupt you, sir, but you need to hold the microphone closer to you. Thank you, sir. All we hear now is lack of communication, Communi communication gap. There's no lack of communication or community gap, but there's the lack of discipline, lack of togetherness, lack of understanding. There's a lazy gap. This community needs a change. The change has to come from the mayor, the elected officials, and the community. Let's work together to correct what we have and lay a solid foundation and then build. We must never lose time in vain to regret the past or complain against the change, for change is the essence of life. This your freedom and rights are not to disuse. No one ever lose their freedom and right if they exercise them. We must think too much. When we think too much of ourselves and our own interests, we either become despondent. But when we work for others, our effort returns to bless us. Only with knowledge and understanding can we have the strength of conviction. The people judge you by what you have done, not by what you have started out to do, by what you have completed, not by what you have begun. It's what a person does, not what he is capable of doing, that shows in the record of achievement. The only way to help anyone is to give them a chance to help themselves. We must change our age long loyalty so we don't have to fight and kill for things we look bad. But to work with the new mayor and make New Bedford a progressive and safe city to live and to work and play. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, David? From Payne Arm Avenue. David, where are you? I mentioned your name in the talk. Oh, I, that's right, I am. Uh, so that drops us down to Mr. Paul Affinity. Paul? Not Kevin, Paul. Okay, Lynn's going to help you out. She's right behind you, Paul. between the Zyterian, uh, the Whaling Museum, and any other function that goes on in the city with the restaurants. Uh, I heard somebody else speaking about this a little earlier. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, advertise. You know, you have to let people know what we have in the city, because I think it's, it's a gem. We have a gem in the city, and if, uh, you don't advertise and let people know what's going on. The Blues Festival last year, 
After the Blues Festival, I asked people, why didn't you come down from Boston? I work in Boston. They didn't know anything about it. Why didn't you come down to the working waterfront? I think that would interest your kids. I didn't know anything about it. And I told Evan before, I could be giving hundred dollar bills away on the end of my street in my house. If I don't advertise, I ain't giving away a dime. You have to let people know what you have here in order for them to come down. You know, this is a wonderful city and it will sell itself. All they've got to do is come down once. Stop at Davies Locker, stop at any restaurant you can think of off the top of your head. We, our restaurants are just as good as any restaurants in Boston. Except the Boston restaurants are advertised. On the radio, in the newspapers, we don't seem to put it out there. And believe me, the perception of New Bedford in Boston is not good. We have to change our perception. I mean, we have to change their perception of us. You know, th this is a tremendous community with a wonderful history that if we don't share with the people in Boston, with the people in Providence, and get them to come into our community, we've got a piece of coal. It's not a piece of coal. It's a diamond. And all they've got to do is come here once. And I believe this city will sell itself. But if we don't let them know what we've got going on, there's nothing in Boston about what's going on at the Zyteria. Yet, I got something about all the places up in Boston, the Garden Museum and this museum and that museum, sent to my house in New Bedford about what's going on up there. We need to let them know what's going on here to bring them down. We get the train coming from Boston and we don't let them know what's coming down. It's coming down empty. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And, and if you decide to give out hundred dollar bills on your street, I'm not telling a soul because I'm just gonna hang around and collect as many as I possibly can. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna hear from my youth now. Um, Top of the list here is uh, Thomas Foster. Now, last week we heard from a lot of you, but they were from the all the same organization. So I'm hoping tonight uh, that we hear from more youth. And if you're from the same organization, please let me know. Uh, we'll put you on. You'll be entitled to your three minutes, like everyone else. Uh, but I guess that's you, uh, cadet. Do you, do you refer to you guys as cadets or as young marines? But either way, this gentleman in his BDUs uh, will get the microphone. There you go. Thomas, and you have three minutes, young man. Frank Foster of the uh, South Coast Young Marines. Um, I just wanted to get across tonight that I think the city should try and help get the word out about the Young Marine program. I mean, we sponsor the ROTC program, which is in Bedford High, but the Young Marines Regardless of age, 8 to 18, you can join, and it doesn't matter what school you're in at all. And it's a great program. I mean, I've learned a lot from it. I've learned integrity, honor, you know, what it's like to fail, what it's like to succeed. And I don't think I could otherwise learn that it, just down on the street. And I see a lot of kids, you know, they, they talk about you know, doing drugs and it's cool and, and whatnot. And I come here and I feel at home because my peers, they, you know, they're with it. They know what's going on and they know that drugs aren't cool and, and they should be taking care of themselves, taking care of themselves so they like their head. And uh, I just, I just think that the city could, whether it's on the radio, on the TV, just help get the word across. I mean, that's all I ask, really. It's a great program. It's an excellent after-school program. I know a lot of parents are looking for a program for their kids, and this is an excellent one. I mean, yeah, you will get yelled at. You go through boot camp, but it builds a lot of character, and it instills you with a lot of traits that you just couldn't otherwise learn somewhere else. I mean, and that's all I really want to say.
Zachary Stanton. Zachary? I, I hear Zach. Uh, another young Marine. Okay, fine. Different message, right? Okay, here's the microphone. And then we'll hear from an organization that will do the residence. I'm Private First Class, Stanton Zachary, and I, my great idea would be to get, take away guns from teens. I know firsthand what it feels like. <laughs> that one was a lucky few that got away unharmed, and I would really like it for a curfew before 10.30, um, more police patrols, and metal detectors at the school, because I know that it's not safe. People are bringing weapons to school, and drugs and stuff like that. And I would like uh, for a charity for the young Marines, because we don't have a good indoor during the winter drill deck, and that's all I'd like to say. Thank you, Zachary. And our, our first organization here uh, signed up, it looks like uh, Jackie O'Dell, uh, Northeast Seafood Coalition, uh, 50 Home is Wealth, New Bedford, is that right? Jackie, and you are, and then Boyan will help you out, just one moment. Let's give it a second, it should be fine. Am I on? Yeah. yeah. You on. <laughs> My name is Jackie O'Dell. I am the executive director of the Northeast Seafood Coalition. We are a fishing industry organization that represents family owned and operated vessels um, across, the, across the Northeast as well as shoreside businesses. Um, we have an office in Gloucester. We also have an office in New Bedford as well. Um, my great idea is to work with the new mayor and his team in um, putting New Bedford on the map, um, whether that be across the United States, um, educating people, um, PR, marketing campaign, letting them know the importance of New Bedford as a fishing community and the importance of, of family-owned and operated fishing businesses. Um, I also believe that New Bedford has a significant place um, uh, it needs to secure its future um, in fishing and needs to continue working with, with other ports to ensure that, um, that, that, does, that that happens in the future. Um, that's it. Uh, thank you, uh, Jackie. I appreciate that. Now we're going to go back to the residents, and then we'll do the same uh, six, two, and one. Uh, we'll move right along. Um, I know who this nice lady is. Uh, please bear with me. Uh, Carol Stepanowski. Is that right? Carol. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll get you. As you're speaking, in, uh, Mr. Phillips is going to help me, Carol, right behind you. As you're speaking into the microphone, folks, you see how I have it? If you could keep it right around there, it would be a great help for everybody here and a great help for r and that your wonderful, wonderful job that they're doing. The rule of thumb is about two fingers, folks, about two fingers, if you could, please. Carol. Hi, my name is Carol Stratesky. I was and close. I have a great idea. I know my name is very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> but my idea includes our youth to our senior citizens. I feel that every child going to the Bethel Public Schools in elementary schools should know the history of the city in which they live. From our beginning days during the whaling industry, to the textile, to our present situation with the we are fishing industry, being the number one fishing port and capital for the scholar industry in the United States. The students, I feel, should all have the opportunity to go to the Whaling Museum, to go to the Siemens Bethel, learn all about the Siemens Bethel, should tour 
the historic district of the city, should go to Fort Robin and Fort Tabor to learn where, when it first was Fort Tabor and how it became Fort Rodman. <coughs> we have a beautiful city. I know. I walk many streets throughout the city when my neighbor was campaigning for school committee. And the architecture in this city throughout from the federal period to the Greek, to the Italianate, is exquisite. We have a jewel. We need to work. Our tourism could increase. We need to get people involved. We have enough organizations, neighborhood associations. I feel that one day, during a, the nice weather, all these organizations could get together and we could go and start cleaning up different parts of our city. I am sending people who come to the National Park to different areas. I want them to be, see a clean city. Our youth could get involved in this. You know, in high school, they look for community service. Why not implement this into some of our students' curriculum? Whether it be at the Buttonwood Park or going to the seashore. We need to look into this and make our city, as it once was during the whaling days, one of the richest cities in the United States. And it was a significant part in the world. And I wish all of you to have a very happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. I agree. Maybe we can get some of our, our state legislators to fight the wound on MCAS so they can teach our local history. They barely teach the history of the United States because of MCAS. I talk about it all the time. And Mr. Quinn looked at me, and he knows he's right. Um, you'd say skip over the entire Civil War, but that didn't matter. All right, back to the residents. I don't want to cause any problems here tonight. Uh, uh, yeah, I do, no. Uh, Mike uh, McCarthy? Did I say that right? Hillman Street? Mike, where are you? Mr. Phillips is going to help you out, Mike. Thank, thank you. Just in time, so I have to get back to work. Uh, this, my idea is something that I've heard mentioned before, but I've never heard any concrete ways of implementing it. I dub it the eyewitness program with uh, lowercase i, a system of digital cameras and servers that can be put throughout the city. There would be three main types. The first type would be brought by the city. The city would work with the police and the DA's office to find hot spots where crimes tend to happen over and over again. The second would be bought by businesses, mainly the 2 a.m. liquor establishments. I'm sure owners would love to have a little bit of, you know, tracking down the people who cause a bunch of trouble afterwards. Uh, the third group would be bought by neighborhoods that don't fall into either of the other two categories. Neighborhood groups get together, raise the money for their cameras. The data that would be captured by these cameras would be transmitted over a Comcast fiber optic line. I see that our franchise agreement with Comcast is running out. I'm sure this could be negotiated with them so that we can get this taken care of as a service to the city. Uh, the data would be stored on servers on city property. The thing that we would mainly have to think about are civil liberties. I'm sure people don't want to have Big Brother, someone watching over their backs day and night, etc. This data would not be used for surveillance. It would only be used after the fact. The data would be stored for three days, and then unless it's pulled and burned onto DVD to be used for a case, it would be deleted. The people who would have access to this, we'd have to have a city IT kind of person, a representative from the police department, someone from the DA's office, and possibly someone from the attorney general's office or federal. They would have access to pull that data and burn it only after someone called in with a problem. That way you don't have to worry about people being tracked by a, you know, if an unsavory individual ever got into one of those four positions. If any of that data was pulled, all four representatives would be alerted to that being pulled. To pay for this, we could pursue Homeland Security money, because this would definitely help, I think, in the safety of our city. The thing that's great about digital footage is you can't intimidate it. You can't intimidate digital footage, you can't intimidate digital footage's family. 
So if we get these thugs off the street, we get them held over for trial, then they get released back on the street. Well, this way, maybe we can keep some of them off the streets, and in a few years, we'll notice that our streets are a lot safer. Thanks for hearing my piece. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Cyril Angelini? Did I say that correctly? Are you here? Okay. But you stepped out. Well, we'll move forward. Mr. Brian Martin. Mr. Martin, are you here? Please stand in and be recognized. Brian Martin, going once, going twice. No, oh, three times. Mr. Tom Davis. Lynn, right behind you, Mr. Davis, gonna help you. If Mr. Ooh, excuse me, if Mr. Martin comes in, could you uh, tell Mr. Phillips? I'll sneak in. I got uh, four ideas, and I'll go over them quickly. The first one is in the area of improving neighborhood safety. I lived and worked in Tokyo for five years, and they implemented a first-class community leasing program. And the keystone of that program was to put kiosk police stations in all the following neighborhoods. These kiosks were put out on the sidewalk. There was only enough room for a desk, two chairs, and a phone. One officer was there in the police station all the time. There was a second officer walking around, not in the squad car, but walking around the neighborhood. And this is well documented. You have significant impact on reducing crime in those neighborhoods. It also resulted over 10 years in just a huge improvement in each of the neighborhoods with the kiosk police stations because a lot of people just wanted to move to those neighborhoods and have those police stations. So I'd like to see a kiosk police station installed on the sidewalk or near the sidewalk in each of the problem neighborhoods in New Bedford. My second idea is to improve the uh, public school systems. And I have to say, firstly, that Superintendent Mike Longo, the school committee, and, and a lot of the, the staff of the school department has already, in the last uh, five years, made a lot of improvements. But there's just still a long ways to go. For example, let's take MCAS scores. We still rank in the lowest 5% of MCAS scores of all the school districts in the Commonwealth. Dropout rate, 35% of the kids that start in the school system freshman year end up not graduating. That's one of the worst four-year dropout rates in the Commonwealth. And basically, if kids are doing well in school, they're going to stay in school, graduate from high school, and most of them will enroll in college. But if they're struggling with school, particularly early on, and they don't catch up, they're going to get discouraged and prone to dropping out. So how do you... How do you make a dent uh, in this problem? Is you have to give a lot of extra help, starting in first grade, to kids that are having problems with math and English. And, and we don't have to go very far to get good ideas for doing this. Where in the nearby community? They had a dropout rate uh, you know, seven years ago that was the same as New Bedford's. They cut it more than 50%. What did they do? They started giving extra help to kids that needed it. So every kid that was having problems in math, they were required to take a second math tutorial course. Every kid having problems in English had to take a second English tutorial uh, course. Also in Boston, there, there are two inner city uh, uh, schools, you know, in the very worst neighborhoods, much worse than anything in, in New Bedford, and they implemented an after-school uh, tutorial system very efficiently. So they get college kids to come in and, and tutor small groups of kids. Now what's happened the last two years in these two schools in inner city Boston? 100% of the kids... Thank you very much. Okay, can I just... One, one other idea. 10 seconds, final word. We, we need to improve the efficiency of, 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 of government. So, our residential tax rate is 42% higher than Fall River and 52% higher than Dark. So we need to establish a efficiency and productivity expert in City Hall, and you'll get a, a 50 times return on your investment. There's huge room for positive. Thank you, Mr. Davis.